Now, several arms of government prepare for ways to function optimally in the face of COVID-19 pandemic, which has led to nearly 830,000 deaths across the world. The issue of virtual litigation, the independence of the judiciary and bottlenecks to federal character top discussions at the 2020 Annual General Conference of the Nigerian Bar Association. Plus TV Africa's Mary Chinda was at the conference and brings us this report. It is not merely the 60th Nigerian Bar Association's annual general conference, but the first virtual conference of the association since 1960. In attendance are over 25,000 registered professionals joining online following the realities of COVID-19. The conversations here range from the independence of the Nigerian judiciary to return to true federalism and to issues of nation building. Nation formation. What Nigeria has simply produced is a deep structural problem for, for itself. And a structural edifice that is in trouble requires a structural solution. It does not require a paint or a coat. It requires that the edifice be deconstructed and reconstructed on the basis of agreed values, shared uh, vision, and a common identity. Our country second quarter GDP declined by 6.1%. That is on the back of a already one point something percent in first quarter. And I'm sure the similar thing will happen in third quarter. So we are going to go into a second recession within four years. As the COVID-19 pandemic posed over 53,000 cases across the country and over 1,000 deaths, the issue on the front burner for members of the bar here is how virtual litigation and court proceedings can be fostered during and post-COVID-19. The Supreme Court made a categorical statement that virtual hearing was not unconstitutional. COVID experience has really exposed a lot for us as a nation. I'm sure you were here when you saw the discussion on the virtual proceedings in court and the legality of it. You know, it's now the new normal. With Nigeria turning 60 in less than two months, legal minds here say that the theme of this year's conference, Step Forward, couldn't be more appropriate as it serves as a wake-up call for the Nigerian judiciary. The essence of stepping forward is to move and begin to tackle those issues that would make us grow as a nation. The issue of citizenship as opposed to indigenship is part of the major conversations as this panel discussion thickens. The nation now finds itself in the middle of an increasing clamor for outright secession by some of the ethnic groups. The NBA's annual general conference represents one of the largest singular gatherings of lawyers in Africa. Mary Chinda reporting for Plus TV Africa. Thank you very much, Mary Chinda, for that report. The issues of uh, virtual hearing and reforms have been at the top um, of the MBA conference to help us make more sense of these developments. We're joined by Olu Olumayowa Ido, legal practitioner. We're also joined uh, for this discussion by Dayo Lumwagu, a public affairs analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on, on the program. I'll start with you, Ido. Uh, again, the need to embrace this new normal is at the front burner. How prepared do you think our judiciary is for it? Um, I'm not sure how well prepared they are because I think, you know, this is not something they've... Um, this is not something they've basically adopted in the past, like on a on the scale that you're going to need them to now. I think in the past, what you had was when if you had a witness who wasn't around, you could basically beam them beam them in by video feed. But now, I think you know this is going to be something that has to be invested in because for it to work, you kind of need. Um, you need everyone to buy into it. So first of all, you need lawyers to buy into it. So if 
court is going to start at nine. You need people to be robed and sat um, before court starts. You need the judges. Then you need, you know, if people, potential members of the public want to join in. So I think it's something that has to be kind of like sensitized to everyone. I'm sure when it starts, if it starts, there will probably be issues like at the beginning. But I think it's something that it, as time goes on, will become commonplace and will become adopted. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Ido. Let's come to you, Mr. Lomuwagu. From the point of view of a public affairs analyst, would you say virtual hearing is what the average Nigeria would jump at? Oh, I, I think, uh, I think mean, clearly, if the world is moving and uh, we cannot just sit and the, the world is going to move past us, uh, we are in the, the period of the, the new normal and uh, clearly, uh, because of development all over the globe, uh, Nigeria cannot be isolated. Uh, but to talk about the acceptability of the virtual hearing and all that, I, I think uh, clearly, uh, even what we, we, we were used to, uh, how, how much of acceptance do, 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 do I mean, I, I mean do, can, can you guarantee from the, 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 the public? Uh, so, because you, you see challenges with the process, even the one we are, we are running with now, and I'm saying that uh, if we have issues with that, clearly you're going to also have issues with this one. But it 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 must it, 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 it have to tell about our commitment at the end of the day to make changes, our commitment to to make things to work. Uh, so clearly, uh, if this is what is happening in the other, other uh, 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 everywhere all over the world, and uh, Nigeria cannot be left behind. And like my my, my friend said, it's it going to need to begin to sensitize people. I mean, it's going to cost a lot, so much. One, the wheel must be there, and then we can be talking about the cost and the thing that we need to adjust and all that. But as to whether we should go into this or not, I mean, clearly, yes, we've got to go into it if that is the new number, as part of the new number. But they, you see, they, they probably will likely appreciate whatever they think of. We, we, we support their interest. We enhance their interest. So what we, we want as the public is that, I mean, you get justice from the court and you get it in a timely manner. So whatever it is, whether it's virtual or whatever, once we are guaranteed that, I'm sure the public will want to jump at it. And so what we need is more of sensitization, more of talking, then the commitment. And I'm sure it's going to cost a lot for even the, the legal practitioner themselves. There's a lot of things they need to bring up to speed and all that. And clearly, but what I'm saying is, at the end of the day, Nigeria cannot sit down. And this, everything is going to have to be All right, Mr. You know, it is argued in some quarters that the ground norm, the constitution, must be reviewed first before virtual proceedings can have some form of uh, constitutionality. What would you recommend? Um, if I'm correct, I think believe the Supreme Court has already basically um, approved this. Um, if, and I know there's a, there's a bill before the National Assembly that's, that wants to kind of adopt this. But I think, you know, if you're waiting for it to be added into the Constitution, I think, you know, we, we might be here a long time. I think this is one of those things where we have to evolve with the times. So um, if, um, if there's a, like, so if there's a will on the part of, um, because one of the things you have to remember is that, you know, the law has to be seen to work and um, the, the speed at which the law has worked in Nigeria is already, is already slow. So we can't really fall behind because I know at a point, it would, if you wanted to get a date at the Supreme Court, you had to wait at least a year. So if you're waiting for it for the National Assembly to, you know, make it a law, I think, you know, we might be here a while. I think we have to just, um, the judges have to give um, practice directions, which we already kind of have that basically allow them to go ahead and we can then basically get it legislated on. But I don't think it's appropriate for us to wait for it to be legislated upon. Mr. Lomuago, we have had issues of distrust in our judicial system. Um, do you think, as a Nigerian, that we could bank on this system for justice to be served without you know, some real fundamental changes? You see, um, the justice system in Nigeria is—I uh, mean, we we all we every—I mean, we see what we have in brand, 
And uh, I'm sure an average Nigerian will not say it's comfortable with the justice system in Nigeria. Uh, one in the area of how fast, how quickly you can dispense justice. And uh, even the whole process, I said, uh, I mean, you see a, a case that you think is, uh, you, you possibly think, I mean, it's a done deal. And uh, then the, the judiciary comes to tell you a different thing, I mean, based on technicalities and all that. And uh, you're wondering, what is the spirit of the law? What is the spirit of justice and all that? Uh, 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 so, I mean, there have been issues in the past where, I mean, you, you look at a, a case that you think you're not know, going to fight this month, but they take almost eternity. I mean, you, you see people die in the course of it. I mean, you, you, your few witnesses die in the course of the cases and all that. So at the end of the day, uh, justice denied. Sometimes, just, I mean, delay is justice denied. Uh, and so clearly, even the way we are, the structure we have on ground, there's a lot of things that need to be reached. There's a lot of restructuring that has to take place in this system. You see, like I said, ultimately, what we're looking at as a public is, you see, a lot of people don't go to court because, not because they don't have a good case, but because nobody wants to be there. I mean, we're going to court every day forever, you know. So if I know, if I look at the case I have, yes, I know I have a good case, but you see, I can tell you, for example, I have a case in court right now that I know it's, 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 not, it's, it's not something you should you'll be talking about. But clearly, that case is taking two, three years. And I'm from, personally, I'm tired. I don't want to go to court again. And at some point, I will just say, look, I'm not interested in this case again. You know, not because I know I, I, know I don't have any, but because I cannot guarantee what is going on. Uh, and so I think it is important. You see, I know we're going to do it as a country. It is important that uh, we, we, we are able to restructure fundamentally a couple of things in our judicial system now, such that when the access to free hearing is important. Now, uh, how do you get justice at the end of the day? The long process, you know, how do... Mr. Lomuago. Okay, I think the network uh, took him off for a bit. We'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Ido. You get a bit comparable to what we have okay, in other class. Whether we're going back to or we think the status quo, you, you see. Uh, uh, so all right. Whatever uh, we're going back to our estimate in the status quo, we've got to get it right. Fundamentally, we need to change the couple of things. Okay. I don't know if you have a thought to add to what Mr. Lumuwagu uh, said, Mr. Ido. Um, uh, while you're, you're, you're thinking about that, uh, I want you to just uh, take us through some of the bottlenecks you see uh, with the implementation of uh, virtual proceedings and how uh, these challenges uh, could uh, be addressed so that the proceedings uh, will be seamless. Um, I think the first problem we might have, you know, is with timing. So are we going to create a system where all the lawyers and all the, um, all the parties are logged on to a Zoom call or some whatever technology is being used? And then, you know, people have things they're doing. So are you going to sit down there waiting or how long will one case take and how, like, can you... Um, so basically, the idea is, can we roster the, um, the cases we have on the case list, like, effectively? Then the other thing I think we, issue we'll always have is, I think, is technology. Because can you guarantee that every lawyer has a smartphone? And if they don't, who's going to provide the smartphone that's going to allow them to do this? Uh, then I think uh, another I problem you, ha you might have is with smartphone for the lawyers? Pro is that would that be an issue <laughs> you're using one right now <laughs> no you can't, you can't the thing is you can't you can't guarantee that every lawyer has a smartphone lawyers are very underpaid so um you know if if the lawyer doesn't have a smartphone what are you going to what do you expect them to do about it then i think mm -hmm. the other thing you have to think about is the idea of you know cases at trial one of the elements of like the um judicial system is that People, um, you have public hearings, so if a case is going on, you don't have to be a party to go to court. So I, as a journalist, could go to court today to, you know, observe what is going on. In cases like this, like, how do you ensure that there's that transparency or accountability? How do other people get access to these platforms where they're going to take place and see the judicial system work? The other thing you also have to think about is the idea of, like, cross-examination. So... In a, in a trial, you know, cross-examination is when the counsel on the other side is um, questioning the party on the other side. 
And in that type of situation, you know, one of the things you have to study in court is body language. So in a situation where we have a virtual hearing, I don't think, you know, the body language can be, I don't think, you know, you lose that element of interaction that you would get in the normal court. So I think, you know, those are the type of things we have to think about. Although one solution could be that cases where the trial stage could be conducted in courts, but obviously it would be very social distance. So if you're not one of the parties, you shouldn't be in court. So that way, and that could still be beamed um, online, so people could still watch it and see what is going on. But um, I think, you know, we just have to be creative with these things and just kind of try and find Actually, solutions to these issues. I don't think, you know, they're not new issues, but we just have to, uh, we're living in very uncertain times, so we have to kind of bear that in mind as we go along. Actually, um um, um, I mean, it, it's a good thing you made a suggestion as to the way forward, because it, whether we like it or not, uh, this is going to be our reality for uh, quite a while. We'll go for a short break. And when we come back, uh, gentlemen, please stay with us. We'll be right back.